Puja IAST, Puja Devanagari, Puja Anglicism, Puja Tamil, Puse IPA, Pu Espanol, Puya is a prayer ritual performed by Hindus of devotional worship to one or more deities, or to host and honor a guest, or one to spiritually celebrate an event. It may honor or celebrate the presence of special guests, or their memories after they die. The word, Puja, is Sanskrit, and means reverence, honor, homage, adoration, and worship. Puja, the loving offering of light, flowers, and water or food to the divine, is the essential ritual of Hinduism. For the worshipper, the divine is visible in the image, and the divinity sees the worshipper. The interaction between human and deity, between human and guru, is called darshan, seeing. Puja rituals are also held by Buddhists and Jains. In Hinduism, puja is done on a variety of occasions, frequency and settings. It may include daily puja done in the home, to occasional temple ceremonies and annual festivals. In other cases, puja is held to mark a few lifetime events such as birth of a baby or a wedding, or to begin a new venture. The two main areas where puja is performed are in the home and at temples to mark certain stages of life, events or some festivals such as Durga puja and Lakshmi puja. Puja is not mandatory in Hinduism. It may be a routine daily affair for some Hindus, periodic ritual for some, and rare for other Hindus. In some temples, various pujas may be performed daily at various times of the day, in other temples, it may be occasional. Puja varies according to the school of Hinduism. Puja may vary by region, occasion, deity honored, and steps followed. In formal Nagama ceremonies, a fire may be lit in honor of deity Agni, without an idol or image present. In contrast, in Agama ceremonies, an idol or icon or image of deity is present. In both ceremonies, a lamp dia or incense stick may be lit while a prayer is chanted or hymn is sung. Puja is typically performed by a Hindu worshipper alone, though sometimes in presence of a priest who is well versed in a complex ritual and hymns. In temples and priest-assisted event puja, food, fruits and sweets may be included as sacrificial offerings to the ceremony or deity, which, after the prayers, becomes prasad, food shared by all gathered. Both Nagama and Agama puja are practiced in Hinduism in India. In Hinduism of Bali Indonesia, Agama puja is most prevalent both inside homes and in temples. Puja is sometimes called Sembahyang in Indonesia. Etymology. <inaudible> <inaudible> Puja Sanskrit, Puja Tamil, Pusi has unclear origins. J. A. B. Van Butenen states that, Puja emerged from yajna rituals, linking it to the Pravargya Vedic rite. The Rigveda in hymn 8.17 uses the word, Satchapujanayam, Sasapujanayam in the twelfth verse, where it is an epithet for god Indra in a context of vocative singular, praise. The ancient scholar and Vedic text commentator Sayana explains the term as a form of Praise, worship, invocation. The Gryasutras use puj in the context of rites, as does Sanskrit scholar Panini. However, none of these texts imply puja as a form of devotional prayer worship. According to Natalia Lidova, puja is unlikely to be of Indo Aryan and Vedic origin because it lacks a Sanskrit root and it also lacks cognate parallels in other Indo European languages. Its root are probably Dravidian in origin, but the evidence for this alternative hypothesis is also largely missing possibly because devotional worship is not as ancient as Hinduism. Collins states that the roots may be pu flower and ge make, or a form of making flower sacrifice. However, this proposal is problematic because pu comes from an Indo-European root, while ge from Dravidian. Charpentier suggests the origin of the word puja may lie in the Dravidian languages. Two possible Tamil roots have been suggested, pusai, to smear with something, and puche, to do with flowers. Origins According to scholars, one of the earliest mentions of puja is in the Griya Sutras, which provide rules for domestic rites. These sutras, dated to be about 500 BC, use the term puja to describe the hospitality to honor priests who were invited to one's home to lead rituals for departed ancestors. As with Vedic times, the general concept of puja remained the same, but expanded to welcoming the deity along with the deity's spiritual essence as one's honored guest. 
The Puranic corpus of literature, dating from about 6th century CE, contain extensive outline on how to perform deity puja Deva puja. Deity puja thus melds Vedic rites with devotion to deity in its ritual form. As with many other aspects of Hinduism, both Vedic puja and devotional deity puja continued, the choice left to the Hindu. As a historical practice, puja in Hinduism, has been modeled around the idea of hosting a deity, or important person, as an honored and dearest guest in the best way one can, given one's resources, and receiving their happiness and blessing in return. Paul theme suggests from passages in the Ramayana that the word puja referred to the hospitable reception of guests and that the things offered to guests could be offered to the gods and their dwellings. The rituals in question were the five great sacrifices or Pankamahayajna recorded in the Gryasutra texts for this literature, see Kalpa. The development of puja thus emerged from Vedic domestic traditions and was carried into the temple environment by analogy, just as important guests had long been welcomed in well-to-do homes and offered things that pleased them, so too were the gods welcomed in temple homes and offered things that pleased them. Copper plate charters recording grants of lands to temples show that this religious practice was actively encouraged from the mid-4th century. Topic. Significance In the earliest texts describing Vedic puja, the significance of puja was to host the priest so that he could make direct requests to the gods. An example petition prayer made during a Vedic puja, according to Wade Wheelock, is In contrast to Vedic pujas, the significance of deity pujas shifted from petitions and external goals to the experience of oneness with the deities and their spiritual essence. It became a form of yoga whose final result aimed to be the consciousness of God through homage to God. Nevertheless, even with this evolved theoretical spiritual significance, for many people, puja continued to be a vehicle to petition desires and appeals, such as for good health of one's child, speedy recovery from illness, success in venture envisioned or such. In the structure and practice of puja, the mantras and rituals focus on spirituality, and any petitions and appeals are tacked only to the end of the puja. Zimmer relates puja to yantras, with the rituals helping the devotee focus on the spiritual concepts. Puja in Hinduism, claims Zimmer, is a path and process of transformation of consciousness, where the devotee and the spiritual significance of the deity are brought together. This ritual puja process, in different parts of India, is considered to be liberating, releasing, purifying, and a form of yoga of spirit and emotions. Puja in Hinduism sometimes involves themes beyond idols or images. Even persons, places, rivers, concrete objects, or anything is seen as manifestations of divine reality by some Hindus. The access to the divine is not limited to renunciatory meditation as in Yoga school of Hinduism or idols in Bhakti school. For some the divine is everywhere, without limit to its form, and a puja to these manifestations signifies the same spiritual meaning to those who choose to offer a prayer to persons, places, rivers, concrete objects or anything else. <laughs> Temple puja Temple Mandir puja is more elaborate than the domestic versions and typically done several times a day. They are also performed by a temple priest, or pujari. In addition, the temple deity patron god or goddess is considered a resident rather than a guest, so the puja is modified to reflect that, for example the deity is awakened, rather than invoked, in the morning. Temple pujas vary widely from region to region and for different sects, with devotional hymns sung at Vaishnava temples for example. At a temple puja, there is often less active participation, with the priest acting on behalf of others. Topic. Structure, services and steps Topic. Elaborate puja A full home or temple puja can include several traditional upakaras or attendances. The following is an example puja. These steps may vary according to region, tradition, setting, or time particularly in ways the deity is hosted. In this example, the deity is invited as a guest, the devotee hosts and takes care of the deity as an honored guest, hymns and food are offered to the deity, after an expression of love and respect the host takes leave and with affection expresses goodbye to the deity. Indologist Jan Gonda has identified 16 steps Shodasha Upachara that are common in all varieties of puja. Avahana invocation. The deity is invited to the ceremony from the heart. Asana. 
The deity is offered a seat. Padya. The deity's feet are symbolically washed. Water is offered for washing the head and body. Argya. Water is offered so the deity may wash its mouth. Snana or Abhisika. Water is offered for symbolic bathing. Vastra clothing. Here a cloth may be wrapped around the image and ornaments affixed to it. Upavita or Mangal Sutra. Putting on the sacred thread. Anulapana or Ganda. Perfumes and ointments are applied to the image. Sandalwood paste or kumkum is applied. Pushpa. Flowers are offered before the image, or garlands draped around its neck. Dupa. Incense is burned before the image. Dipa or Arti. A burning lamp is waved in front of the image. Naivadya. Foods such as cooked rice, fruit, clarified butter, sugar, and beetle leaf are offered. Namaskara or Pranama. The worshipper and family bow or prostrate themselves before the image to offer homage. Parikrama or Pradakshina. Circumambulation around the deity. Taking leave, sometimes additional steps are included. Dhyana meditation. The deity is invoked in the heart of the devotee. Akamaniya. Water is offered for sipping. Abharan. The deity is decorated with ornaments. Chatram. Offering of umbrella. Chamaram offering of fan or fly whisk. Chimera. Visarjana or Udvasana. The deity is moved from the place. There are variations in this puja method such as Pancha Upachara Puja, puja with five steps. Chattishasti Upachara Puja, puja with 64 steps. The structure of elaborate puja also varies significantly between temples, regions, and occasions. Topic. Quick puja. A quick puja has the same structure as acts ordinary people would perform for a quick reception, hospitality and affectionate interaction with a beloved guest. First the deity is greeted, acknowledged by name and welcomed, sometimes with a dia or lighted incense stick. The devotee proceeds to connect with the spiritual manifestation by meditating a form of darshan, or chanting hymns and mantras, then personal prayers follow. After prayer is finished, the spiritual visitor as guest is affectionately thanked and greeted goodbye. A quick meditative puja is sometimes offered by some Hindus without an idol or image. According to Chris Fuller, an anthropologist, Hindu texts allow flexibility and abbreviated puja according to occasion, needs and personal preferences. In Balinese Hinduism In Hinduism of Bali Indonesia, puja is sometimes called sembahyang. The word originates from two words in Old Javanese, semba and hyang. Semba means to respect and bow down, hyang means divine, god or sang hyang widi wasa, holy man, and ancestors. So to pray means to respect, bow down, surrender to the divine and ancestors. Sembahyang puja is an obligation for Balinese Hindus, the prayers and hymns are derived from the Vedas. A family typically offers prayers every day, with kawangan and other offerings. Kawangan means aromatic, and it is made from leaves and flowers in form of auspicious Vedic symbols. Balinese use kawangan to worship the divine, both in form of purusha soul and pradhana body. As with India, Balinese make offerings, including symbolic inclusion of fire, incense and mantras. Topic. Guru Puja In the case of great spiritual masters, there is also a custom to perform puja for a living person. Gurus are sometimes chosen as objects of puja and honored as living gods or seen as the embodiment of specific deities. Gurus are sometimes adorned with symbolic clothes, garlands and other ornaments, and celebrated with incense, washing and anointing their feet, giving them fruits, food and drinks and meditating at their feet, asking for their blessing. Topic as a social and human rights event. As with church services in Christianity, puja in Hinduism has served as a means for Hindu communities outside India to gather, socialize, discover new friends and sometimes discuss ways to address social discrimination of Hindus. 
For example, Marion O'Callaghan reports that the Hindu diaspora brought as indentured labourers to Trinidad by the British colonial government, suffered discriminatory laws that did not recognise traditional Hindu marriages or inheritance rights of children from a traditional Hindu marriage, nor did the non-Hindu majority government allow pyre cremation or construction of crematorium. These Hindu rituals were considered pagan and uncivilised. Puhas offered a way for Hindus to meet, socially organise and petition their human rights. Over time, Puhas became as much as social and community recreational event, as a religious event. Topic. Critique of Puja in the Purva Mimamsaka school Although Puja is accepted as a valid religious activity by Hindus at large, it has long been criticized by Mimamsa thinkers. The foundational work of this school is the Karma Mimamsa Sutra or Aphorisms for Enquiry into the Act composed by Jaimini. The earliest surviving commentary is by Sabara who lived around the end of the 4th century. Sabara's commentary, known as Sabarabhasya holds pride of place in Mimamsa in that Sabara's understanding is taken as definitive by all later writers. In his chapter entitled Devadadikarana 9 5-6-9, Sabara examines the popular understanding of the gods and attempts to refute the belief that they have material bodies, are able to eat the offerings made to them, and are capable of being pleased and so able to reward worshippers. Basing himself on the Vedas he refused to accept the Mahabharata, Purana texts or even the Smriti literatures as valid sources of authority, Sabara concludes that the gods are neither corporeal nor sentient and thus unable to enjoy offerings or own property. For this he appeals to empirical observation, noting that offerings do not decrease in size when given to the gods, any decrease is simply due to exposure to the air. Likewise he argues that substances are offered to gods not according to the wishes of the gods, but that what is vouched for by direct perception is that the things are used according to the wishes of the temple servants In the course of his discussion, Sabaras asserts that there is no relation between the case of guests and the sacrificial act. This incidental remark provides sound historical proof that puja was built on analogy with Atithi, the ancient Vedic tradition of welcoming guests. What Sabara is maintaining is that this analogy is not valid. While the Mimamsakas continued to maintain this interpretation for centuries, their defeat in debate at the hands of Sankaracharya led to theirs being a minority view. It is a remarkable testament to the plurality and tolerance of Indian civilization that Mimamsakas flourished even into the 17th century, as evidenced by the commentaries of Nilakantha. <laughs> Regional names Puja, sometimes spelled Puja, is called Puja also spelled as Pujo in Bengali, Pujai in Tamil, and Buka, Buka in Thai. Topic. See also Topic. References Indian Festival Festival Culture and Heritage Topic. External links Puja, Expressions of Hindu Devotion, Susan S. Bean, Museum Anthropology, Vol. 21, Issue 3, pages 29-32, December 1997 On Practical Hinduism, The Puja as Human Contact, Mankind Quarterly, 1989, Vol. 29, No. 4, pp. 353-371